I'm a multimedia artist, so I bounce between uh, uh, disciplines, sorry, painting, sculpture, printing. I do um, uh, mostly studio performance. My practice is very much uh, a performative uh, practice, which is uh, process-based. Um, so when it comes to painting, I like mixing up uh, different uh, things or paintings and I use them as point of entry so in as much as it is very in as much as it is um, very much about the paint it is also very much about uh, the abstract thought behind um, the things that I'm interested in which is very much tradition uh, traditional history and the problematics of our um, of uh, uh, identity politics, I would say. So, and then I like really working in between the lines. Uh, so, what I like doing is um, I take uh, 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 like I want to, I want to draw mostly it's like it starts as a drawing and also as a painting at the same time. Okay. But it very much ends up like. What the, the act of drawing is always about line, huh? and, and it's always nice to know how these lines kind of work and how they play on your mind. Um, so I don't rush to start filling up the, the negative spaces or the positive spaces when you draw. And hence you find uh, drawings like this, like a drawing moves from, um, from, um, uh, from a 2D thing and becomes 3D, uh, which is, you know, pretty much what is happening also with this. So it's very much, it's a movable thing. Huh? Now this is really in metal, so, um, and so these, they, the way my sculptures and my paintings start is always the same way. Some of it has got photo references, some of it has got maybe a text or maybe a song or um, a coming up of all this at the same time. Huh? Okay. And I think it will tell you more about my space. and. Um, Sometimes, like I'm, I am quite old, orderly, like I want to organize things. Um, uh, but then some, I'm also very interested in the environment I live in and the challenges. So you tend to, sometimes I tend to leave dust sit on things because I'm interested in the mark that is made when you touch a dusty object and then you touch your paper, you know, that mark that makes up. Huh? Some of it is permanent, some of it is not really permanent. Um, so that's the reason why you find some of these things, like I'm not 100% careful when I'm ordering uh, certain works. And some of it I fold it because I'm also interested in the way paper folds and also how ink breaks up. Uh, and, and, and that's the reason why you tend to find, like I fold these, like this is the way I started. Um, and this has now become a mixture of uh, some thoughts I had. Um, and then, so I want to show as much as I can just for you to see when I start arranging. And some, sometimes this arranging takes days, months, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just for me to come around. Mm -hmm. So here I started playing with the same, um, that same image I'd shown uh, mm -hmm. earlier on. And this is a woodcut, actually. Okay. Um, and the way I do the printing is that I do not want to print the same way. So the pressure and the things I put on top, uh, of um, once I put it on the machine, the pressure is, um, is not equal on sides. Mm -hmm. So you have di different tones and then sometimes you put like for this one I put a, a paper on top just those small tiny millimeters would give you a different of pressure um, and I think you do know that if you have a slight bend in your measurement like just a just a tiny millimeter it will be like this side is maybe half a millimeter on the other side is going to be like the difference is going to be like really big and can be even 10 Things like that happen on a, uh, and I like playing around those uh, variations. So this is the way this book goes. Like, um, so this is this is a sketch that I call Black Moon. Um, um, no reasons at all. Uh, it's just one memory that I have of my grandma. Uh, but yeah, so I play around the Black Moon idea. Uh, I stayed with her for six years in the in the, in the at the, at the farm in the village. You know? So some of the things I do is referencing to that. The image was taken in, Mala uh, in Malawi, uh, like Malawi, the image of the lady. And then uh, the, this woodcut piece was a part of a seat when I started the project uh, Studio 225 in Chilenja Market before I moved here. 
uh, and the guys I was welding with, they had this small seat, that small, and I kind of liked it, so I just told them they sell it to me, and they were laughing, and I went like, I, I need it. So I paid for it, and then, um, so this is the way these books now go, it's like drawings after drawings. Um, I'll show you, I want to show all of it. So something I also like in this one is like, uh, so here I have to extend some other thing, I don't know what it's going to be, but these are really loose pages, like seriously loose pages, yeah. Um, so it kind of looks like it's the same thing, but I differently uh, put them together. And then after that, I need to project another image. It can be like 10 images on one page. Um, so it goes on like that. And these I've been calling, uh, uh, it's all in the, in, the, in, the, in the thought of black things. This is pretty much the same print, but not really the same print. Yeah, this is a negative and a positive, and they're all printed at the same time. Like literally at the same time, yeah. Um, and I find that very interesting because it always surprises you. Um, uh, these are sketches of something I'm, 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 uh, I've been like, yeah, the same thing I started showing you, huh? Yeah. Um, and this, you can see this one. This is a portrait of me. Uh -huh. uh, and this one is a, an image taken from uh, Pinterest. I see. Um, because I'm very interested in the Kinkisi uh, thing. And I'm also interested in the sources where I get these things. So you can see like the registration on this paper. Is just, I just got this and then uh, you've got everything. So that's my laptop, how much my battery power, the time, okay. uh, you know, uh, Bluetooth thing. And then you see the app, and things okay. like that. Huh? Okay. Um, this also tells you something about how people find, like how you map how you get around things, how you navigate, you know. Um, so sometimes I want to, I, I, I was on the same thing talking about time. Uh, I showed this to my brother-in-law and then he, he was laughing uh, and then he, he, he said, uh, um, but this thing, the mask huh, yeah. I'm doing is like it's one old thing. Uh, and then he was saying, but why do you have your watch on when you're talking about things from the past? No, like the mask is me wearing it actually. And I'm referencing to something that is old, but also something that is very much current because the mask I commissioned it to be made for me to be used to pass a certain thought, you know. Uh, but also the, the type of clock, the design of the clock that I'm wearing also talks about the period the image is being made. I see. I see. Okay. You see it, huh? So I, uh, this, the, the, the way I play, the way I want to speak, is very much around the things that are very mm -hmm. around me. Okay. Okay. So they okay. tell you exactly of what time or what period uh, a person, or rather I am, I mean, huh? okay. so it continues, I mean, it's the same thing I'm doing. Uh, this is one famous artist, behind is one famous painting. I don't want to say his name for now. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, here. I don't know if you can see, but this is, this also is from the same serial um, uh, box. Okay. So, um, uh, this is an artist, young artist uh, in Zambia. His name is Alvin, and I was helping him out with some things in printing. And then I, to, in order for me to say out my point, mostly I have to be very much physical. So I made him pause, and then I took the picture, and then after that um, um, did a monoprint of it. But, uh, and this is me. Um, uh, and this is a, this is the same image now you can see. Okay. So you can see the cereal box. Yeah. 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 Ah. Okay. I see. I see. Uh, and then the same. If you if you're looking at like, look at this. I want to show you. If you if if you look at them, they're all done from the same some and and i added up some different things yeah okay um but yeah you look at them it's a it's very much the same image but also it's very much different because in this one you have the positive really emphasized but here what plays critical um or like the, the main uh focuses on the on, on the negative not on the yeah. the, the, uh, the positive because in the space, in this space, uh, in this time and place, you know, um, I 
am very much the material. Okay. In as much as I'm a, and I am interacting with the material. Okay. Um, and that's and that's the reason why you find some of my of some of my works is really like me. I use myself. Like an image of of me yourself as a reference. Yes, because I very much believe that I am also a material. And like the project I was doing in Chilenga Market Studio Two Two Five, that's one of the things that the art, each artist had to accept. Like they are a material, and whatever they are making there, for me, I'm going to I may be using them as a material. So, like for example, in performance, huh? yeah, you become the material also. Exactly. And for me, what I do in my space or rather in my studio is that I. Um, the act of making is actually a performance for me. Mm -hmm. And it is a performance because I don't check myself to really be this the, the artist that we know, like, you know, the modern artist that does this and that and that and that and that and paint and so on and so forth. What I actually do is, is almost like a ceremony, almost, I say, not, not in all, but almost as a ceremony, like the Gula uh, Wamkulu, Kulambakuwaro, you know, this is from the eastern uh, part of the country. Uh, and um, I reference those as my heritage because my father came from there. And then also I reference a lot of uh, the, from the southern, and you can see that from my sculptures yeah. that is a synergy of with the two tribes. But then after that, other tribes come in. Okay. Uh, and what they do in those ceremonies, they, it's not just about the one who wears a cute and go, goes to perform. Yeah. It's also about the actual person yeah. that is being possessed by a spirit, and then they go to perform. Mm -hmm. The place where they make. The things matter, the people that make the things matter, they are part of the ceremony. So the preparation is a whole year thing. And then also the food eaten, the how it's prepared, the people that come, they all become, more especially Guru Amkulu and Kulambakuwalo, when you start following up how they do those preparation, it's, it's fascinating, believe me. Um, when I was doing a research in Malawi, actually they had the privilege of Guru Amkulu being done just for the people that also took that class in Mua Mission. Very, very, um, I found it actually very profound okay. to be found in a space like that, uh, to be uh, relating to people that are spiritually possessed at a certain moment and a certain moment no, and then also they use it for social comment or political comment and stuff like that. And then they tell you also the history, how it started, uh, and also where the people are from and how that history is carried on yeah. in those performances. Yes. Yeah. So because I don't live there, because I don't exist, and that's what I'm interested in, I, I assume the same role mm -hmm. in a space like this. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's what I like do. Okay. So mine, mine is like, how does the material, I think William Kentridge is the one who said this, like he's interested in how materials come into the studio. How info actually says how info, I'm paraphrasing yeah. how information comes in the studio. So it can be through songs, yeah. it can be through books, it can be through pictures yeah. and, and things like that. And I, I relate to that because I find that's how I relate to my environment, how I tend to amass information, and then how I choose to use or to how, how which how I choose to use it, and also what I deem relevant at the moment, because there's a lot of editing. So like. These drawings, I can tell you which one was from where. Like, for example, I know that this is from Livingstone, um, uh, Katombola area. Okay. I, you know, uh, this so, was Malawi. So all these are individual drawings. These are, yeah. Okay. Uh, and like from different places. The big lady there is from Malawi. Okay. So like, I took the pictures when I was there. Um, um, that is also from uh, uh, Malawi. Okay. And then Chipata, Chipata. You know? So when you go through my archives, you find that I've got lots, because I take a lot of pictures, and I use those pictures for my uh, stop motion animation uh, projects I'm doing. So some, some of them, you find that I use them three, four times, and some of them is just once. Okay. Um, uh, because if you love a thought, it will always, it's like a song, it will always play. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And then what I like doing is like you, migrate or move the image from one medium to another and it gives you different energy actually every time it moves mm -hmm. uh, and then also if you're going to paint them like these are painted black and you can actually see the difference the ones that are painted black you can almost tell that okay yeah but the ones that are still brown the thing the metal that has rusted uh, in time it gives you as if it's just 
that like they are just part of the war, you know, kind of a thing. Yeah. So I'm interested in those. It also gives me an idea if I'm going to do a show, if someone asks me how to present this work in an exhibition, yeah. Yeah. I know exactly how it would feel in an environment. And I very much like the works that challenge a space, you know, so. To say everything in life is very much fiction. I, th I very much think so. I'm not saying I believe that, but I'm saying this is one of the thoughts that has de been developing is that everything in life is very much fictional. Because anything you're doing, if it hasn't been ex norm, uh, uh, um, um, uh, accepted as a norm, then it's not true, you're not supposed to do it, and so on and so forth. So for people that create uh, cultures, they have to live, or people that think, they have to live in a certain illusion or fiction, and then they bring the fiction to life, and then once that is accepted, it becomes part of the... F I find that very, you know, it's, I find that interesting, and I think I want to go on on that mind. Um, uh, but I, get, coming back to your question, I'm always, you know, but coming back to your question about traveling, and, 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 and what I was saying about traveling and space, and how the studio influences this thing. For me, what I find, the, an importance of having a space in a pub, a creative space, even like a studio in a public space, is it offers people to be exposed to something. Yeah. They do not. They start owning certain things not because they they can buy them, but yeah. even if they can't afford, by experience they own the thing. Yeah. The thought stays with them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't own those grounds to really say Africa and this. I don't like the, uh, the discussion that goes around to answer for Africa. I can answer for Zambia, and I know that in Zambia, not just here in the main city in Lusaka, but worldwide, mm -hmm. for young people to... Uh, you know, Zambia was built by young people. For, 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 our young, for young, young people like me today, mm -hmm. to be productive to our nation, we need spaces like this. You know, we, um, um, for us to make conscious decision, even in terms of uh, choosing our leaders and so on and so forth, we need spaces like this. Be because if, if these spaces don't exist uh, and people don't see the u their use of skill, yeah. you know, uh, other African countries, well, I've, I've heard of successful stories for other African countries uh, because they, also their economy is really doing well. But also, again, as we can say, when you look at economies, you a success in terms of economy is also relative on yeah. based on what has been yeah. set as a goal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they are they are doing good. South Africa, yes, I've been there a few, I think about a week. It, not the whole, <laughs> not the whole, specifically Cape Town, no? yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Johannesburg. And what I saw, more especially in Johannesburg, what I saw is like really uh, that's a that's quite a level of um, uh, of freedoms in, in, in terms of, uh, of, of creation, free, creative freedom uh, they have. And I envy that because they, they, they really move. Uh, and we need to come, we need to come to that stage. It may even take, um, uh, I'm not one of the people that thinks it's going to take longer. For a country like Zambia, if we see the way things are moving in Zambia, I don't think it's going to take us really long for the creative to explore more than we have. Uh, but when you encourage, you empower young to think, uh, and also, like I was saying, thinking, but also formalizing your thoughts, which I say is in two forms. If you, if you, there's formalizing by writing yeah, ink and yeah. paint, so and so on and so forth, yeah. and there's formalizing in making, physical making things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you encourage youth to do that, and then you start creating platforms where they can show and also platforms where they can sell. Strong men yeah, yeah. come out, yeah. you know? Yeah. Okay. But yeah. the fact that we have, I mean, in Lusaka, how many creative spaces do you have that focus on just making? Yeah. Yeah. How many do? Believe me, you won't give me that answer. <laughs> I like what Bongo Hive is doing. I like what Mozi yeah. is doing. Yeah. Uh, when you come to, uh, and also what VAC is doing, yeah. um, and other few other organizations that I can't really mention that focus on production. Yeah. But I also like what uh, 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 Lechwe is doing. I like what the 70 is doing. I also like what Mozi is doing because of what also the selling part, which is the, the gallery. So Lechwe, the 70, and also VAC. 
um, at the point of sale. Huh? That's, that's where the, the money is, is being made, like for the arts. Um, Seka Zami is another creative space you find. I like what these, what what is really happening, and we need more. There's another one that has come up, Lusaka Contemporary Space. Uh, it's they're still work building. It's also in Livingston, I think. There's a sister uh, space. Um, I think in Livingstone. I like what is what is happening. These things we need more of them, and we need more galleries. And we need uh, uh, places where young can, you know, you we have to light that candle. I did a f quite a number of paintings, and I did the, I did the sculptures, and then some of the things that I'd left out was after the more especially than Kisi, I, it was always like ringing in the back of my mind, and I wanted to find it in a specific in a specific location of our country yeah, yeah. of which because it's not part of the tribe in that ca in that uh, location of the country yeah. was not there yeah. you know um, and then um, I had to think like okay how many tribes yeah. because at that point everything I was finding people were saying uh, people were saying because then I went to like research just you go and ask people I see. I see. Uh, and then try to find where they are sold like in Osaka and things like that okay. talk to sometimes elders and things like that I see. Uh, and then uh, when I started reading in books so I usually like if I go on holiday I buy I'm, one of the things I've told myself is that I have to come back at least with one book okay. um, so any holiday I go to I need to buy a book. Uh, I got, and I focus mostly on uh, books that talk about uh, culture, yeah. popular culture, and then also really um, not popular culture. Okay. Uh, and then I then I found out that actually these things are mostly for found in the Congo. Uh -huh. The books I was finding mostly talking about the Congo, 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 okay. Congo, Congo, even. People that have studied it mostly they talk about the Congo, oh, um, and 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 it's very much true because most of the tribes in Zambia came actually from uh, that that part of the uh, country. Yeah? Okay. When you're looking at migration, yeah. we all yeah. we all came yeah. from up there. Yeah. I think the Ngonis are the ones that came from uh, mm -hmm. uh, they came from Ese when they were running yeah, from, uh, from yeah, Shaka, yeah. and then they went to Tanzania, I think passed and then went, ended up in the eastern mm. part of the country, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Uh, I stand to be corrected on okay. that one. Okay. But just to stand correct, to be okay. corrected on the route, huh? okay. and won that battle yeah. uh, in that part of the country. Yeah. And the Ngonis, you find that the ones yeah. that have that uh, yeah. thing. Huh? Yeah. But also the, you find the same flamboyant yeah. head yeah. dress thing, you yeah. and hair, good hairstyles, you yeah. find them in Congo. Yeah. Yeah. So when I started reading those books, I then realized that actually the Bembas and the other tribes in the line of the Bembas actually have the same Kisi uh, uh, statue. Um, uh, and then at some point I also did visit um, uh, the uh, Congo Museum in, in Belgium. Uh, and yeah, I was surprised to find uh, Henry Kapata's work. Oh, really? really you know, oh. Alongside where, the, where you find, because uh, uh -huh. they talk about the yeah. Congo, and then yeah. the, the artist was actually from, I think, from Congo as I well. See, I see. Yeah. Okay. But he, he's very much Zambia, you know? I see. Uh, and so I, I, I like the figure of this. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons I was trying to look at it is also the evolution of uh, these same statues, yeah. how, they, how we live today, how yeah. we're using them. Yeah. 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 Okay. Very beautiful uh, book. Um, you know, I like the, I like the works the guy is really put in, and you've got uh, contemporary artist. And this was an exhibition actually in Belgium. Okay. And it, also the focus of the the work I, I find is it's quite related, and it talks about also artists that reference to that. But something that I picked from this one that I really like yeah. is the is um, okay. the Nkisi, yeah. the original one, but also the the. I, then Kisi comes with a small spear, it's like he's throwing a spear. Yeah. So he talks about, one of the parts they talk about is the ki one of the kings in Congo who was converted, I've forgotten his name, um, but I can find his, uh, you know, the page. Just paraphrasing what is here. If you, he converted to Christianity, and then because he was a ruler at that point, he wanted also to make his own flag and stuff like that. Yeah. And then he's the one who first started out using out, uh, he's one of the, the emblem he made had this part um, of the, I think it was just, yeah, it was a fist. But years later, so that is the start of reincarnation, the combination of Christianity uh, and um, um, 
Eurocentric world ruling because he was really combining everything. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that at that, that, that time also slavery was uh, yeah. one of the things, yeah. elements that yeah. was there. Yeah. Um, and in his story, one of the things you find was actually how slavery was done to uh, both ways, if you read yeah. in other books. Yeah. Um, here also they explain about the same reincarnation of the Nkisi in the civil rights movement in, mm -hmm. in, in the States. Mm -hmm. And today you will see it all over being posted. But the, yeah. we know that the Black Panther, the ones that started with the yeah. with yeah. the hand, yeah. Huh? yeah. And all over Africa is being used every time. But actually, it started with our forefathers. Mm -hmm. And I kind of like that moving of, of information yeah. like that, you know. Yeah. Um, on another point, if you go to songs, huh? mm -hmm. uh, there is a. I think you've seen one of the works that I have of the, the Buffalo Skin, yes, the, yes. Uh, Skull. Yeah. Uh, who is that? Bob Marley did Buffalo Soldier. Yeah, Buffalo Soldier. Yeah, and we know it's a story about a black man and stuff like that, and, and so on and so forth. And the way they've been, he talks a bit of, he talks about slavery and the other inequalities that are happening in the world. Um, but also the the thing that I kind of like about Bob Marley is also how it, he, he transcends the plight of uh, of the black man at a certain period, and how he talks, he encourages that the the yeah. black man to yeah. Yeah. to um, uh, like to take charge and free himself mm -hmm. because no one will ever um, uh, uh, take possession of your mind mm -hmm. if you don't let them, huh? yeah. if you don't sell it to yeah. them. They, they, there's this masquerade that they use also for the, the buffalo itself, huh? yeah. um, that they use in, a, in, our, in my father's heritage. And then that same boo, so it's a boo actually, uh -huh. you find the same use of the boo, so we're talking about a male figure, which is Buffalo Soldier, yeah. again a male figure, male masquerade yeah. in Zambia, yeah. you know, yeah. and then also a male figure in, uh, I think it's Spanish, uh -huh. yeah. but in one of the, yeah, yeah you, there's a boo, the game they do with the boo and the flag and, and things like that, huh? um, and I like that language, that transcends boundaries and, and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 uh, and uh, Okay. Boundaries or borders and cultures, yeah, yeah. you know, because it, it, it tells you about how one sometimes uh, uh, um, our societies are, mm -hmm. and sometimes we are looking for the same thing, and we uh, uh, because we're looking for the same thing, and we want to be faced sometimes if we and it's it's human to challenge each yeah. other, yeah. but. Yeah. In trying to find other people have gone taking the route of oppressing others, yeah, yeah. which which that becomes bad. Okay. And if history has taught us anything, is that you'd rather offer equal opportunities for everyone. You know, um, I try to build. I'm very interested in color. Yeah. Like yeah. color is one of the things. So okay. when I'm sketching, when I'm starting out the painting, this is how I start. Like there's always this commotion of things. I don't go with like harmonizing this and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I start cleaning them. Like I call it cleaning it up. Huh? Okay. So you okay. start making them. Sh if you go to Ledgeway, I think they, in their collection you find one of the works that I had done at some point, and it's, they, they're always. Yeah. I think like the small paintings there you find is that the piece is very much colored, and then you have other things in okay. it. Okay. Uh, but in the end, what I start doing is now. Uh, in my free time, I usually like, okay, let me put back the things that I've removed. Yeah. Uh, and I like layering up. I like seeing um, uh, not all of the color, but yeah. some of the colors that I started with from yeah. behind and things like that. Okay. And I, um, uh, the good thing about acrylic, it dries fast. Uh -huh. So I mix up paint, okay. acrylic, uh -huh. spray paint, uh -huh. and spray mostly is oil. And uh -huh. so sometimes it peels. Okay. And sometimes I put objects, and the putting of objects also for me, it still works the same thing like uh, the traditional references I was telling you. Yep. If you go to see Nanga or mm -hmm. uh, a witch doctor or um, what, what do you call it, Sangoma or whatever you can call them, huh? yep, yep, yep. Um, but let's say a priest or a priestess or anything like that, when you go to them to see them, there's always, you have to get, you have to go with something yep. to to start a conversation with, uh, yep. Yep. in the that. When when they when they uh, when Banganga, when they want to talk to their ancestors about you, yeah. there should be something that you have to.
get, they have to get from you yeah. so that yeah. they can use as a point of entry. Yeah, like a token of some kind. Yes, and okay. also like, so sometimes like for example, the Nkisi, mm -hmm. the nails are for sealing up and also for like a confident bounding and stuff like that, or sometimes things for healing. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that happens on that. Mm -hmm. So I kind of find the application of paint different colors on a canvas and yeah. things on this flat thing, okay. like a point of entry yeah. to okay. my thoughts, you know. Okay. Um, I put them there not because I want to clean up the environment, yeah. you know, like the yeah. environment, yeah. because I'm not going around picking stuff. I yeah. usually yeah. like to go by yeah. one meter and yeah. then you cut it up based on what you want, you know, okay. kind of a thing. Okay. When I started out, I used to pick up things because I did not have yeah. the, uh, the, the the money to buy the specific yeah. things yeah. I'm interested in. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. But immediately I started uh, getting um, uh, in money. I started like really you buy in bulk because then you stay in one space and then you can work your thoughts out based the way you know them. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, it's the same thing. That's the way I treat my okay. painting. Then the other thing, um, why I construct them like this, is also the way I find information in the streets. Yeah. It's very easy. It's okay. all game about mapping for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you find a poster about which doctors or a traditional healer. Yeah. You find poster about job. You find a poster about beauty. You find posters about. And then also, on top of these posters, you have another poster and another poster that creates layering. again a different. Yeah. The layering creates another. The other dynamics in terms of communication, exactly, huh? yeah, exactly. but also it's and also it's like a fight. Yeah. Um, the struggle between you. Yeah. I, I really like, and that's the season we've gotten into is very much a political one. Huh? So more soon you're going to be seeing faces of president, even just one president of a party or yeah. MP yeah. on top of his own face, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I like that. So okay. because I don't use that public space as my canvas, yeah. this is I literally buy cloth as my canvas, and then I do that. So I print my own, sometimes I do, um, uh, um, what do you call it, um, uh, magazine cutouts. Uh -huh. uh, but I'm not really in that habit. Most when I do cutouts is because I'm like, I want to build a library of images I want. I so like I do yeah. individual yeah. Okay. cutouts from you. Um, okay. Okay. And once in a while you find one of them in the, yeah. in the, in the work. Okay. So that layering is what I'm interested okay. in. And this is some print that I'm constructing the books, okay. doing something there. Okay. So what I then did, the works that remain from there. Yeah. There's a series of work that I do, I call it Chinamari models. Uh -huh. uh, it's, a, it's a celebration of actually just portraits of uh, uh, women, uh -huh. famous and not famous, and also local friends and so on and so forth, uh, that I'm building, and I call it Chinamari models because I'm looking at uh, graduation into, uh, into, into the society. Uh -huh. So I did this, um, uh, and, and this is a, Chinamari models is actually a, it's a ceremony in the Eastern province where uh, it's not called Chinamari Models, I call it Chinamari Models, my series, but the actual ceremony is called Chinamari. So this talks about, it's a ceremony that uh, celebrates the coming of age of a young girl, so they are taught now to be responsible and how to care for themselves and stuff like that. Yeah. And when, when they move to another stage again, it's done on how, if you're going to get married, then you go through the process of uh, being taught on how you keep a house and your husband and things like that. Um, and then I started making them uh, into yeah. turning into the book, so they became pages in this object book, which is very much a sculpture. And so, um, um, most of them have been sold, uh, and the ones that I did not take to the exhibition is part of this. And some of them are portraits of famous models. Um, uh, and these I get from magazine cutouts, like I was saying, and then also uh, from uh, internet. Sometimes I do that. Uh, for this series specifically, I actually uh, did that. I uh, found it a little qu quite useful. Um, so you can see it's really much something uh, like that. There is one here, if I'm not mistaken, of my young sister. Uh, but yeah, so it's just portraits of um, uh, old portraits and me. Yeah, this is me. I don't know what I'm doing with this one. But yeah. So when the when the book is done. Uh -huh. So what I've done is that after constructing the book, I deconstructed it because I wanted to print some, reprint, add some images, and then after that I bind them. Okay. If I need be that I do it again, I'll break it up and then, you know, because I've got a pressing, yeah. uh, etching press there and I can do, it allows me to do that. Mm -hmm. So um, from that exhibition, you can see how my thought has changed in terms of presenting that body of work that I was really interested in.